Father God, for this day. A day that has brought so much. And we know one thing for sure that you have been with us this entire day. So we thank you for your presence. Not only here with us, Abiyah, but throughout the four corners. You have been with all those who call upon your name in Ruach and in truth. We thank you for the strength that you have given unto Mori Samat and to his Mishpaka. May you continue to strengthen them and console them in this time. The same for Ima Millicent and her Mishpaka. Even the same for Aki Yosef and his Mishpaka. All of those who have lost someone, may you console them and give them shalom in due time, Father Yah. For those who are still here, Abiyah, who have been given the opportunity to still be in the land of the living, allow us to understand that we have a purpose to fulfill and that we are not here by chance, <laughs> that we are not here for any vain thought, Father Yah, but for your purpose, which you have placed inside of us before you formed us in the womb. Hallelujah. So from the youngest of us to the oldest of us, Father Yah, May you continue to show us the way. Lead us and guide us into your truth and your truth alone. Not into man's doctrine. Not into vain philosophies and deceit. But into the only way that gives and sustains life. Forgive us, Father God, for our sins and our transgressions, our iniquities. Those that we did with ignorance and those that we did willingly, Father God. Told you for your mercy and for your compassion, giving us the opportunity to turn from our wicked ways and to correct mistakes that we have made in the past. That we may come before you blameless. For you said if a wicked man turn from his ways and come before your face and all that he has done in the past shall be forgiven, he shall live. But the same shall be for a righteous man or woman who turns from righteousness to wickedness. That in the day that you visit their iniquity, Father God, that all of their righteousness will be remembered no longer and they will die in their iniquity. So allow us to understand that every day is a test. Every day we have to get it right. And we pray that your word not only is heard, but it is in our hearts that we may live it and walk it out and be an example to others of what it means to be a daughter or a son of Yahweh. But that is our reasonable service. Total Rabbi, again, I'll be out for allowing all of us to make it here safely for those who have to travel. All of those who are online, we even pray for Ima, Shoshana, as she goes to the emergency room, Father Yah, for her finger. May you work all things out for her good, oh Yah. That whatever is needed, I'll be out, that you will be able to provide and that you ease the pain in her finger, Father Yah. And give her peace in her mind. Told I, yeah. But we know that you are the one who makes whole. That you have given us herbs of the field for healing. And you have even placed intellect and wisdom into the minds of doctors. So we pray first for the healing from you, Abiyah, yeah, in the spiritual before anything occurs in the natural. Told our Father, yeah. Bless are you, Yahuwah. Bless the name, Yahuwah. And bless you who comes in the name, Yahuwah. May Benai Yisrael say hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Uh, before we get into the lesson, we'll uh, start with praise report. So anyone who has a praise report, uh, you may now speak at this time. Um, go ahead, Shasha Ma, since your mic is on. Oh, go ahead. Um. Anybody has a uh, praise report? Go ahead, Shasha. 
Sebastian, Sebastian, can you hear me? Hi. Danny, yeah, I just want to give, you know, praise to the Most High, you know, just for, um, you know, for our protects, you know, from the Mishpacan, you know, especially those that were traveling, and also me. Um, you know, I just left my mother's house not too long ago, and somebody, um, they pulled right in front of me on the freeway, you know, and they almost got T-boned, you know. Um, and, you know, of course, I, I applied the brakes, so I definitely want to give praise to the Most High, you know, for giving me protection, and also that person protection as well. And I also want to give praise to the Most High for, um, you know, just wisdom, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I want to thank Yah for showing me new ways to uh, seek Him. Um, you know, teaching me how to sacrifice more of my life um, to please Him. You know, to strengthen my relationship with Him. And one thing that I learned that you know nothing, you know, nothing is better than having a relationship with Yah. You know, because you know in this life, you know, you can you know, graduate college, you can get, you know, a job promotion, you know, get a vehicle, get a nice house, you know, you can get a position of power in the government, but, you know, nothing is better than having a relationship with Yah, because once you get that relationship with Yah, that, that's something that can last forever, so I'm going to give all praise to the most high. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? When I think of the goodness of Yah and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank Yah for being in my life. I thank him, I thank him, I thank him. I thank him for the Mishpita. I thank him for another week he has brought us to. I just thank and praise him and give him the glory and the honor for the good things that he has done. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, anyone else? Hallelujah. Just want to give a hallelujah for allowing us to make it here safely to be around Ms. Prakash. Uh, it's always good to be in the presence of family. Um, yeah, right, just, yeah, just told Aya, told Aya la kind for life. Anyone else? Praise the most high for uh, of his good and his mercy and growth forever. Okay. Thanks for uh, one more wonderful Shabbat. Another opportunity to sit down together, eat together, rejoice together, sing together, praise together, yeah. and be happy. Mm. In the shalom, in the joy of the most high in the heart. Being around Mishpaka, like a boy, Daoud, Joseph, my uncle here. And yet, there I don't see you from Sukkot. Praise the most high here today. It's nice. Oh, praise. <laughs> it's another Shabbat, another opportunity. That's what I pray the most high for that. Huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the most high for Yahweh. 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 Hallelujah. All praises to the most high, who is our strength and our shield and our protection. Um, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, I want to praise the most high for answering prayer for you all getting down to, uh, to control and be with our brother Sh Shamak and hopefully everything is going well and spirits are lifted and uh, the, the most high is doing what he does. And uh, I will also want to thank and praise the most high for my father's life. My father passed before, day before uh, Samak's father passed. I didn't make it known to the Mishpikah because I was I was uh, I was having some emotions, and I was a very me very hard man, like the lion is to his cubs. And as I told my mother, the day after. 
my father passed <clears throat> here in Hampton. <clears throat> excuse me, here in Hampton, it was very foggy all day long. And uh, what came to my Ruach was an old lion has gone to the place where old lions die and breathed his last breath. As I take away from, <clears throat> from my father's life, strength and dignity and a strange perseverance, a working man's um, attitude towards righteousness, even though he couldn't, to, to my eyes, he didn't reach that perfection, but he was working the best he could from what I saw in him. And I have a lot of respect for my father that he showed me and my brothers and each one of us, each one of my brothers took something of my father's in us and with us. So I just want to praise the most high for, for his life and for uh, all that's going on in the world today, because as you said, Adon, we're not here. Uh, we're not left here by happenstance. So praise Yah. I yield. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Aron. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I just want to give praise to the Most High uh, for another day. Um, see sunlight. Um, yeah, I'm glad that everybody made it down there safe. Um, I pray that the Most High uh, continues to uh, keep everyone safe. Um, I was thinking about uh, there's a lot of people in this world that are unfortunate. They don't have... Uh, homes or, you know, uh, any protection from uh, things that's going on in this world. And um, I was just thinking about how the Most High continues to uh, keep me safe and my Mishpaka safe. So, um, yeah, I just I just really want to praise him because uh, I'm not alone and that uh, he's continuing to uh, give me more understanding and more strength. And um, I pray that uh, Samak, uh, and anyone who has lost anyone this year, that he continues to uh, give you the strength uh, to prosper and move forward. Um, and yeah, hallelujah. 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 Okay. Is there anyone else? No, I want to press you. Go ahead, Aki. Yeah, I want to give a lay out to the most high. Give all the scenes and praises to our creator. The one that give us life. Mm. That breathe the bread of life into us. I just want to say so that y'all for travel mercies. You know. For me and my Mr. Cotton and my family, it was, a, it was a long trip. But um, I'm uh, happy to bring in the Shabbat with the Mr. Cotton. You know, the, you know, just sitting at home, I get asked to be around Mr. Cotton and bring in the Shabbat, especially on my birthday weekend. So that's my. <laughs> That's my gift to myself, you know, <laughs> be around my Mr. Cobb, man. That's, you know, back in my younger days, I used to go out and do all that craziness. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just want to give the scene in the most side that he allowed me to see 43 years. Hallelujah. So far, even though it's Sunday, but I'm talking in existence that told a yeah that he let me to be 43 years. But um, almost a year and a half ago, my older brother died at the age of 43. So, mm. you know, and right before his 44th birthday. So it's told a young, you know, that he got me through it. You know, mm -hmm. I appreciate the, what the most I do for my life, my family, for each and every one of you all, man, because uh, can't take life for granted. And as y'all can see, time is moving. 
Sure. So while we're here, like they say, that's the film. While we're here, man, try to get yourself right with the most high while you're here. That's my layer. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Well, um, I I do think that it's a club like right up the street. So just if you wanna like right after this, you know me, you wrote to get no okay. All right, never mind, never mind, never mind. Disregard that. Disregard that. We'll take that out of recording. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um get into the word. If there are no more halal yas. Uh, we're in the book of Second Kings, Melakim Shani, commonly called Second Kings, chapter twenty-three. Uh, while everybody's turning to chapter twenty-three, can anybody tell me what happened in twenty-two? Because in order to get twenty-three, you kind of you know it's running from from chapter twenty-two. So. Um, Let's even go back to uh, 21 real quick. So um, who is King? Well, who is King right now in um, chapter 23? Josiah. Okay. Um, Yoshiahu, commonly called uh, Josiah. Okay. And um, who is his who is his father? You almost said it. You, you were just about to say Manashe. Manashe. And Manasseh began reigning at age of 12. Now, um, Manasseh, was he uh, righteous or wicked? Okay, he was probably one of the most, he was probably the most wicked king yeah. that we had in Israel, even though he kind of turned at the end. Um, and he gained the throne at how old? Okay, so Josiah was eight. His father was how old when he got the kingdom? Top of page, uh, top of chapter 21. 12. 12. 12. Okay. Told out. He was 12. So the father was 12 when he got the kingdom, and the son was eight. One was wicked, one was righteous. So does it matter the age or does it matter your choices? Okay. So not only choices, but the people you have around you, because chapter 22 said that. Um, who was with uh, King Josiah? The eldest, um, and more specifically, who? Uh huh. Now keep 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 going, Mom. You get clear. You say the eldest, then the priest. Uh uh. -uh no, nope. we did chapter twenty two. Let's um. Yep, yeah, you got described. Um. The high priest, she said priest. Um, who is the high priest? It's just a Kilkiah. Okay, told out, told our boss. So Kilkiah. All right, so they found what? They found Torah while they were cleaning up. And then where did they go? It's just a, you know, this is a refresher for those who didn't read it. Brought it to the king. Uh-huh. They brought it to the king, and then the king said to go to who? Go back to the high priest. Uh, hold on, let me. No, no, no. I don't think. Holder. Uh huh. The they went to Holder. Okay. Okay. You, no, you, you're right. They went to the king, and the king said, "Go inquire of the Most High." So then, once they went to inquire to the of, of the Most High, they went to Holder, who was a who was a what? Who who's she? Prophetess. Okay, prophetess, and she lived at the university. So she uh, verified it, verified that this was the true Torah mm -hmm. and that y'all have not been walking in it. And this is why y'all going through trouble. All right, so boom. So we got through all of that. Um, when Yoshiahu heard or uh, Josiah heard what was going on, he did what? Okay, he, he rent his clothes and he humbled himself. Therefore, the Most High said, all right, because you humbled yourself, I got you. All right, now let's go to chapter 23. Um, I'll read because I know, uh, I, you, you, unless you just want me to give you the computer, because I don't think, I don't think your voice is going to get over here. Now I got it. I'm just playing with you. Second Kings 23. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahuwah. And all the men of Yehuda and all the inhabitants of Yerushalayim with him, and all the priests 
and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the Sephir of the, of the covenant, which was found in the house of Yah. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before Yahweh to walk after Yah and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all of their heart and with all of their soul to perform the words of this covenant that are written in this Sefer. And all the people stood to the covenant. Um, I don't know whether I should do it like more or just, yeah, we're just gonna read all the way through, I'll come back. Well, no, because I don't have notes, he definitely does. Um, very interesting. So chapter three, the king did what? The covenant. Okay, okay. so he, he read the covenant, right? In verse three, it said, the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before Yah to walk after Yah to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that are written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. That's what it says in English. Now, what is a pillar? It's, it's a column, it's support. Um, strength. Okay. It um, holds something up, right? It's, it's, it's a, in a sense, could it be a foundation? Yeah. Okay, okay. So it said he, he stood by a pillar. So that word pillar is, I believe, um, Amadou or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, Amadou? Okay, okay, hallelujah. So the root of that is Ahmad, which means to stand. So he stood or he became a pillar by a pillar and read the covenant. So he stands up for the covenant. And then it says, once he read the covenant and made the covenant that the people stood to the covenant. In the Hebrew, it doesn't say to the covenant. They stood in the covenant. So to agree, they all stood. As in, I'm ready. You have, you have risen to the occasion. To become a pillar to uphold the covenant, which is what we are all supposed to be doing. All right, verse four. And the king commanded Kilkiahu, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of Yah all the vessels that were made for Baal and for Asherah and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Baal. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Yehuda had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Yehuda and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, to the moon, and to the planets, and to the host of heaven. Um, can somebody check that word for planets? I don't, I don't think that's planets. Is that constellations? Yeah, it's supposed to say stars then. Um, and to the heavens. And he brought out Asherah from the house of Yahuwah without slackly. Let's go back to that. That's, that's crazy. Um, oh, that's what you're doing during study? We caught him on video, folks. It's all my Bible. All right, so, so quick question. Um, they had to bring out all the vessels from where? <laughs> say, say it again. The temple. Oh, they brought um, Shashamar. Go ahead. Yeah, I was looking at that word for planets. Um, Strong's H 4208, and it's pronounced uh, Mazala. Mazarov? Yeah, the definition is basically constellations, okay. constellations. And another definition is signs of zodiac. Okay, it's, it's from signs, which is the stars. There are no planets. I just wanted to point that out. There are no planets. They're just wandering stars. Most I didn't make planets. Um, but she, they brought out vessels that were meant for other deities from inside the temple that was dedicated to the creator that kings placed in there. So then, so they reestablished the covenant and then right after reestablished the covenant, 
they had to clean out the temples or clean out the vessels. So have we cleaned out the vessels? Have we cleaned out our houses? Both spiritual house and your literal house. Have you cleaned them out out of the things that you once ordained to be there? You once allowed to be in your house. But you say that you're a part of this covenant now. So once you accept the covenant or you stand and you say you're going to uphold the covenant, right? Now you have to clear stuff out. So he went from clearing stuff. They went from clearing stuff out as a group, as a, as a mishpaka, right? Now they have to, to put down the idolatrous priest or kill the idolatrous priest. I'm not advocating for, for violence. But what I am saying is those who have taught you incorrectly that you have allowed to be in your ear, they need to be put away. So whether that's friends, whether that's family, whether that's your spouse, whoever it is that has been placing other things inside of your ear, they now have to be put down. Can we go real quick to um, Deuteronomy chapter 13? Dabarine, commonly called Deuteronomy chapter 13, and we're going to start at verse 6. Oh. So what's his yeah. Deuteronomy, Dabarine 13, starting at verse 6, and it reads, If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or, your, or the woman of your bosom, or your friend, which is as your own soul. So that's like, you know, BFF. Entice you secretly, saying, let us go and serve other deities, which you have not known, you nor your fathers, namely of the deities of the people which are round about you, nigh unto you, or far off from you, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, you shall not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall your eye pity him, neither shall you spare, neither shall you conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be the first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And you shall stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust you away from Yah your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mizraim, from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no, mo no more any such wickedness as this is among you. So anyone who is trying to, to steer you away, right? And that's not just blatant, okay, let's go and, you know, serve this idol that I just made yesterday in Woodshop. No, that's, that's, that's blatant. But anything that takes you away from your creator and the worship of your creator, that's idolatry. Now you are putting something else over the worship of Yah. So whoever is enticing you to do so, they got to go. Or else, how can you be a pillar and uphold the covenant? Let's go back to 2 Kings. So they had to clean out their vessels, clean out their households. Then they had to clean that which is around their gates. That's the eye gates, their ear gates. Those things that would take you away from the creator. Those that were worshiping many things, not just one or two, everything. Back to verse 6, 2 Kings 23, 6. And he brought out Asherah from the house of Yah without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. Hmm. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of Yahuwah, where the women wove hangings for Asherah. So, sheesh, look at, what, look at what's in Yisrael. Mm -hmm. Look at what's inside of Yisrael, by the temple, inside the temple. Ooh. Inside the temple, you have idolatry. Outside the temple, you got sodomy. Mm -hmm. That sounds like now. Inside these temples, you have idolatry. People are worshiping Yahusha, Yahweh Shai, worshiping themselves, worshiping their leaders, 
That's idolatry. Those are the priests that need to be put down. Outside of the temple, outside of our households, we have, well, you see the side of me everywhere. We don't got to touch on that. But it shouldn't be around where we're supposed to be worshiping. There should be no abominations or defiled things around where you worship, around your temple, around you. But they were comfortable with that. Verse 8. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Yehuda and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geva to Be'er Sheva and broke down the high places of the gates that were in the entering end of the gate of Yehoshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of Yahuwah in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the Matzah among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. So for those who don't know, the, the valley of uh, Gehenna or Hinnom, that's, that's where you get the concept of hell. That's where you get the concept of hell. So they will burn their children there. So it will be a constant burning. Verse 11. And he took away the horses that the kings of Yehuda had given to the sun. At the entering end of the house of Yahuwah, by the chamber of Nathan Malek, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. And, to, and the altars that were on top of the upper chamber of Akash, where the kings of Yehuda had made, and the altars which Manasseh, had made in the two courts of the house of Yah, did the king beat down and broke them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Shalomo, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Malcolm, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he broke in pieces the images and cut down the Asherah poles and filled their places with the bones of men. Hmm. Moreover, the altar that was at Baal and the high place which Jeroboam, Yerub, uh, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made both that altar and the high place he broke down and he burned the high place and stamped it to small to powder and burned the Asherah pole. And as Yoshiyahu turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were in the mount and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of Yah, which the man of Elohim proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of Elohim, which came from Yehuda, and proclaimed these things that you have done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Shomron or Samaria. Um, who's that prophet? Or what story does uh, what story does both of those prophets come from? Okay, the, the old prophet and the new prophet. The, the old prophet is the one who proclaimed well, the young prophet is the one who proclaimed it along with the old prophet. Both of them are buried together. Verse 19. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Shomron or Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke Yah to anger, those Yahu took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Baal. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars and burnt man's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passat unto Yah your Elohim, as it is written in the Sefer. As it is written in the Sefer of this covenant. Surely there was not holding such a Passat from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Yehuda, but in the 18th year of the king Yoshiahu, likely, wherein this Passat was holding to Yah in Jerusalem. Hmm. Which is interesting. How how is it that uh, there was not a pace out like this held?
from the day of Judges. So we know Judges is after Joshua. So from Joshua to all the Judges, to Shemuel, to King David, King Solomon, righteous kings, right? Why is there not a Pesach held like this one? Hmm. Because they had cleaned everything up and they were all together in one place. Now, some would say that Pesach was a uh, communal festival and Josiah is the one that made it a national come to come to Jerusalem festival. He kind of centralized it. So that's also uh, verse 24. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all of the abominations that were spied in the land of Yehuda and the Jerusalem did Yoshiahu put away that he might perform the words of the Torah, which were written in the Sifa that killed Kiyahu, the priest found in the house of Yah. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to Yah with all his heart and with all his soul and with all of his might, according to all the Torah of Moshe. Neither after him arose there any like him. Mm. That's, that's a powerful statement. Verse 26. Notwithstanding, Yah turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Yehuda, because of all the provocations, or the provocations here, that Manasseh had provoked him with. And Yahuwah said, I will remove Yehuda also out of my sight, as I have removed Yisrael, and will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Yoshiahu, and all that he did, are they not written in the Sefer of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yehuda? In his days, Pharaoh Nico, king of Mizraim, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Parah, and King Yoshiahu went against him, and he slew him at Megidon when he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot dead from Megidon and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own sepulcher. And the people of the land took Yahuakaz, the son of Yoshiahu, and anointed him and made him king in his father's steed. So Yoshiahu is said that there was no king before him or after him that turned with their whole heart, with all the, with their, their whole might, and so on and so forth. Um, so would that make him just just a question I got in my mind now? So would that make him uh, greater than Dawid? If there was none before him or after him like that, it's just a question. No, yes. All right. Is this a trick question? No, it's not a trick question. It's really a question. Um, no, it didn't say he was greater. It just said that there was no one like him. I'm trying to figure out. It's in the Chronicles. It was just a question. We can continue. Just because you're unique doesn't mean that you're greater. This just means that you're unique. Verse 31. Yahuwah Kaz was 23 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Kamutal, yeah, Kamutal the daughter of Yermiyahu of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Nico put him in bands at Ribla. Huh? Mm -hmm. But how, how, if your father is one of the greatest kings in Yisrael or Yehuda, how is it that you turn to wickedness? Like we just read about everything that that Yoshiahu just took away, killed the priest. He pretty much cleaned up Israel, mm -hmm. and now you've been seeing that for twenty three years, and you decide to be wicked. Mm. It's very very sad. I'm sorry for parents to um, say she was hanging around the wrong people, which could be, right? 
more than likely it was. Um, but what does that say about your bringing up? About the way that you are, um, Proverbs says, training up a child in the way that they should go. So that when they get older, they shall not depart from it, right? What does, so we got wicked king and Manasseh, righteous king, Yoshiahu, wicked king and Yahuwah Kaz. So is Proverbs, is Proverbs correct? That if you train up a child in the way you should go, that he shall not depart from it. Let's get that. Just yeah. right. To do their part, even though a parent can do everything they can to train up a child, the child isn't always gonna be mm -hmm. dedicated mm -hmm. to the training. Okay. It's also a person that make that decision and to make that child has to make a choice. Okay. Something we discussed earlier. Uh -huh. Outside That's of the question. So I don't know. Okay. So it's even though you may right. Parents, you have the you have the obligation to train up your child, right, or to connote, uh, to commit them to the way, or to dedicate them to the way. But as a child gets older, it is still going to be their decision. So whether you were raised in a wicked house like Yoshiahu was, obviously because his father was the most wicked king, you can choose to become great. It's it's all on your choices and your choices also are going to um, reflect who you're around. So your circle is going to influence your choices. Mm -hmm. Once you get out your mother, your father's house, you can't be there for, I mean, some people will try, but <laughs> normally in life, you're not going to be in your mother and father's house your whole life. Mm -hmm. So then once you get out of it, what do you do? It's your choices. So for parents, you know if you have done all that you can for a child, now it's between them and their creator. It is no longer in your hands for you did your job. It's crazy. Um, all right, one verse 34, slightly. Like no, 33. And Pharaoh Nicole put him in bands at Ribla and the land of Kama, that he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he put the land to a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Nico made Eliakim, the son of Yoshiahu, king in the room of Yoshiahu, his father, and turned his name to Yahuyakim, and took Yahuwah Kaz away. And he came to Mizraim and died there. Yahuwakim gave the silver and the gold to Paro, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Paro. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of everyone according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Nico. Yahuwah Kim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zevida, the daughter of Padayahu of Rumah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers had done. So, Chapter 23, we see three kings. We see one of the most righteous kings, which I was trying to find his chapter in Chronicles. Uh, he wasn't supposed to, to, to fight with um, Assyria in, in Egypt. He kind of rebelled at the end. Um, but we see a king, Yahuwah Kaz, that is taken away. And then another son of Yoshiahu. So these are two sons of Yoshiahu who turned out to be wicked. That's crazy. Um, so it wasn't just a, a bad apple. It was a couple. Okay. And then so he puts a tax on the people. Um, were we commanded to pay taxes? Yes. No, <laughs> no, I ain't talking about now. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about in, in Israel. Is Israel supposed to pay taxes? Yes. Oh, 
Why y'all think everything a trick question? It's not a trick question. Is this how we supposed to pay taxes? That's a good. That's a good point. Go ahead, Shy. That's a good point. Ken, I was thinking about the tenth. You know, the tenth that is given to Yah. Would that be considered a tax? Um. Well, let's look up tax real quick, shall we? Okay. Uh, it said tax a rock to arrange to set or put in place lay in order to set forth to value to tax let's see no doesn't say anything about taxes Oh, let's go to uh, Leviticus 27. Wow, 27. And, and Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for Yahuwah by, the, by their estimation. And thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. If it be a female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. If it be from five years old, even unto 20 years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male, 20 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. And if it be from a month old, even unto five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male, five shekels of silver, and for the female, thy estimation shall be of the of three shekels of silver. And if it be from 60 years old and above, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels. And for the female, 10 shekels. But if he be poor, then the estimation, and he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability, that thou shall the priest value him. And if it be a beast whereof man bring an offering unto him, then it's likely. No, it keeps going. Unto the Yahuwah, all that any man giveth of such unto Yah shall be Kadesh. And he shall not alter it nor change it, a good for bad or bad for good. He shall at all change the beast, beast for beast, then the exchange thereof shall be set, set apart. If it be unclean beast of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto Yah, he shall present the priest before the priest, and the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad, as thou values it. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth their part of to your estimation. Every time you see the word estimation, that's the same word, a wreck, which is a, was a value or estimation. So it was only given, we were only taxed when we made a vow. When you made a vow in order to do so. We weren't taxed, and we definitely weren't taxed to give it to Egypt. So just tour. Um, let's go back to Second Kings. So we were not supposed to be taxed, and we're not supposed to give our taxes to anybody. We give the tenth, like Shai and Sis said, to the temple for the temple service. That's it. And for the Levites and for, you know, the orphan, the widow, and the poor. Chapter 24. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar saw a king of Babel came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And Yahuwah sent him, sent against him bands of the Chaldean, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Yehuda to destroy him according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spake by his servant, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of Yah came this upon Yehuda to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did, and also for all the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yah would not pardon. Um, so Nebuchadnezzar, right? So now we're in the time of that. Who's uh, prophesying at this time? It said Nebuchadnezzar that they were taken away, bands of the Chaldean, bands of the Syrians, so on and so forth. 
which which prophet is prophesying at this time? Well, there are a couple of prophets prophesying, um, but there's one major one that's in Jerusalem, and there's one major one that is in Babylon. Let me start with the D. Yeah. 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 and Ezekiel. Daniel, Daniel was was also there prophesying. He was, you know, definitely there with Nebuchadnezzar as well. So, okay, so you, it's two major ones that were talking to the people. Daniel wasn't necessarily talking to the people. He was talking to Nebuchadnezzar. But, okay, so right around, so this particular time period that you read in 2 Kings is the same time period when you go to the book of Jeremiah and you read him prophesying. It's the exact same kings that he's talking to. Um, what we at 24 and uh and three exactly five. Now the rest of the acts of Yahu Yahuakim and all that he did are they not written in the Sefer of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yehuda? So Yahuakim slept with his fathers, and Yahuakim, his son reigned in his steed. And the king of Mizraim came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babel had taken from the river of Mizraim unto the river Parah all that pertained to the king of Mizraim. So when it says that um Yahuakim rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, um, was he supposed to do that? No. Why you say that? Okay. So the Most High told through the prophet Jeremiah, right? You can go to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah tells the people that you are to serve who? You are to serve Nebuchadnezzar. Yep. And if you serve him, you can stay in your land. But if you rebel, that's when I'm going to take you out. Yep. So you're seeing right now that the kings that are rebelling, and that's why in Jeremiah and Daniel, you're seeing people getting taken out of the land. This is about 597 BC. So 597 to 586, well, 586, the temple was destroyed. And that's the second wave. The first wave right here is 597 BC. Uh, verse 8. Yahuakim was 18 years old when he began to reign. He reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nekusta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. That's what we're talking about, 586. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came against the city. And his servants did besiege it. And Yahuakim, the king of Yehuda, went out to the king of Babel, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers, and the king of Babel, took him in the eighth year of his reign. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of Yah, and all the treasures of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold, which Shalomo, king of Israel, had made in the temple of Yah, as Yahuwah had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes, and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen, and smiths, none remained, save the poorest sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Yehoiakim to Babel, and all the, and the king's mother, and the king's women, and his officers, and the mighty of the land. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babel. So he only carried the uh, upper class. Mm -hmm. The poor people he didn't care about because why would you bring poor people into your land? Now you got to take care of them. So only the people that were of value in Yisrael, they, he brought to Babylon. And some of them, I believe it's in here, is, I believe that that's in the book of Jeremiah. Some of them were sent to Spain. Spain asked for some of the royal people that, that you read here. Spain asked for some of them to be taken there. So we had people in Spain, royal bloodline of David in Spain since 586 BC. Verse 16. And all the men of the might, even 7,000 and craftsmen and smiths a thousand, all that were strong and apt for war, even the king of Babel brought captives to Babel. And the king of Babel made Matanyahu his father's brother, king in his steed, and changed his name to Zidkiyahu. Zidkiyahu was 21 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years. Shalom, shalom, mama. 
Land of Talk, I don't. Uh, he reigned 11 years in the steed. His mother's name was Kamutal, the daughter of Yermiahu of Libna. It's likely. Sorry, sorry. I know, I know, I know. It's almost over. Once we finish this, we're not going to go into the SBL. Oh, gosh. Uh, verse, I'm sorry, slightly for that, fam. Uh, verse 19. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, according to all that Yahuwah Kim had done. For through the anger of Yah, it came to pass in Yerushalayim and Yehuda, until he had cast him out of his presence, that Zidkiyahu rebelled against the king of Babel. And it came to pass. And it came to pass, verse 25, chapter 25, slightly. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, he and all his hosts against Jerusalem and pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zidkiahu. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, like, which is by the king's garden. Now the Kazdeen were against the city round about. And the king went the way toward the plain, and the army of the Kazdeen pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. And all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babel to Rivla, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew his sons of, Zid, of Zidkiahu before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zidkiahu, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babel. Time. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, came Nebuzaradan. Zaradan. Nebuzar died. Ew. Captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babel unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of Yah and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. And every great man's house he burnt with fire. And all the army of the Kazdim that were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babel with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuzaradan, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away? But the captain of the guard left the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen, and the pillars of brass that were in the house of Yah, and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of Yah. Hmm. Did the Kazdim break in pieces and carry the brass of them to Babel, and the pots and the shovels? and the snuffers, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered took thee away, and the fire pans, and the bowls, and such things as were of gold, in gold, and of silver, in silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Shalomo had made for the house of Yah, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. The height of one pillar, of the one pillar was 18 cubits, and the capiter upon it was brass. And the height of the capital, yeah, capital, three cubits, and the wreathing work, and the and pomegranates upon the capital, capital, yeah, capital, whatever. Round about all of brass, softly, and like unto these had the second pillar with wreathing work. And the captain of the guard took Sarayahu, the chief priest, and Zephaniahu, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the man of war and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city and the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land and three score men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard took these and brought them to the king of Babel to Riblah. And the king of Babel smote them and slew them at Riblah in the land of Kamah. So Yehuda was carried away out of the land. And as for the people that remained in the land of Yehuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, had left, even over them he made Gadol Yahu, the son of Akikam, the son of Shaphan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babel had made Gadol Yahu governor, 
They came to Gedor Yahu, to Mitzpah, even Yishmael, the son of Nathan Yahu, and Yahukanan, the son of Kariah, and Sarah Yahu, the son of Tanku, Tanku Yemeth, no, Takumeth, slightly, the Neto Fatai, and Yaazan Yahu, the son of Ma'akiti. Ma'akiti, they and their men. And Gedor Yahu swore to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be servants of the Kazdim. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babel, and it shall be well with you. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Yishmael, the son of Nathan, Nathan Yahu, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, came and ten men with him and smoked Gedor Yahu that he died. And the Yahudim and the Kazdim that were with him at Mizpah, and all the people, both small and great, of the captains of the army arose and came to Mizraim, for they were afraid of the Kazdim. And it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Yahuakim, king of Yehuda, in the 12th month and on the 7th and 20th day of the month, that Evil Merodach, king of Babel, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up his head, up, did lift up the head of Yehuakim, king of Yehuda, out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babel, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. That's the end of Second Kings. So, got a quick question. Um, this, this was prophesied, correct? Mm -hmm. So everything that we just read about us being taken out the land um, was prophesied. The uh, temple being destroyed, prophesied. The articles of the temple, prophesied. But for some reason, um, and all of this was done due to two kings. The first being who? Third king of Israel, just to give y'all a hint. <coughs> Third king of Israel. Yeah. Who's the third king of Israel? The entire nation of Israel. Maybe that's better. Ahaz, was it? Say that again, Tony. Ahaz. You said Diaz. He has a. Oh no 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 no. What you say, Adon? Yeah, Kane, Shalomo. Why y'all keep adding like these trick questions? Y'all know Sha Shaul was first. Okay. Kane okay. was second. Shalomo okay. was third. When Shalomo did what he did, the most I said that I'm going to rip the kingdom from you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Then we go to Menashe. Menashe does all the wickedness, and it said what we just read that this is due to Menashe, right? 24-3. Surely at the commandment of Yah came this upon Yehuda to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did, and also for the innocent blood which he shed. But we also read that uh, Shalomo had high places for every king. I mean, well, every abomination of the other nations. So all of this was prophesied. Now, why is it that in the... Um, so... Why was the uh, period of time that Yoshiyahu was king, why was that so interesting or peculiar? If it's prophesied that all of this would happen, which it, which it, which it does happen, what makes his, his reign or his kingdom so much more interesting? Remember, Manasseh is before him. He's wicked. Then you got Yoshiahu. Then after that, you got straight wicked kings. Was it crazy? Yeah. 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 What? Yes, sir. Uh, on, on my point of view, no, um, what I can see here is uh, Yahuwah gave you another opportunity to restore everything 
back to him. And, and the way uh, Joshua uh, reigned was, remember all the king is supposed to know Torah. Every king has to mm -hmm. know according to the Torah. With the Torah and the prophet. So that way he had the knowledge and understanding what is prophes uh, prophesied upon Israel. Okay. So that way when, when this is coming, then the destruction of Babylon of all the king and everything, they don't have because they already know they was saying before one more time, according when when this king the good they did the, they did the good things for Israel. You know, okay. so everything was restored, with everything was tried to purify, everything was clean again. Okay. So and I think I, I see him most high, the hand of the most high tried to uh bring to the memory one more time what is called. So, okay. so. I and I agree with that. So Menashe reigned how long? Okay. So Menashe reigned 55. Uh, Yoshi reigned 31. Uh -huh, 31. Okay, so that's, would you say that those are uh, two different generations? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about, yeah, 55 years. That's some people like. So you have two two different generations, right? And then after Yoshi Yahu, do you have another generation? So you have wicked, then righteous, then wicked, then wicked. So I'm going to ask the question in a different way before I read the scripture, which kind of gives the answer. Well, let me get the answer first because uh, uh, Zoke Yaquab already did. Let's go to uh, 2 Kings 22. And hear what the prophetess had to say. 2 Kings 22, verse 15. And she said unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith Yah, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the Sepha, which the king of Yehuda has read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other deities, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Yehuda, which sent you to inquire of Yahuwah, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, as touching the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you have humbled yourself before Yah. When you heard what I spoke against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that there shall become a desolation and a curse, and have rent your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, says Yah. Behold, therefore, I will gather you unto your fathers, and you shall be gathered into your grave in shalom, and your eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. So the most high, he said, look, I'm y'all have already uh, grind my gears and it's not going to stop. The judgment has already went forth. But since this generation has become the generation to make your heart tender, to repent, to obey, and then as you see, he renews the covenant, so on and so forth. Because you have done these things, I'm not going to touch your generation. You're going to go in peace, which was 31 years. You're going to go in peace. Not only that, you're not going to see any evil. That means that none of your generation will see that evil. Because the leaders decided that we know that what's going on around us is wicked. Let's try to clean it up and take care of our generation. Because the generation before us obviously didn't do it. And we can't worry about the generation after us because the generation comes after us. So they're only going to pick up what we what, what we left off. So his reign is, is so important because in the midst or, or, or in between wicked and wicked, you have the choice, which is pretty much the theme tonight, the, the choice on whether or not you want to be righteous. And whether or not you want to, to stand as a pillar in the, in the sight of the creator for your generation and for his covenant, which he will hear, which he will see, and which he will respond to. So um, that's, that's the end of Second Keys. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Adon. Oh, well, okay. Uh, does, does anybody have any questions?
Um, Shalom Azar. Shalom Azar Quentin Eliyahu. Uh, does anybody have any comments? Anything that they saw? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we uh are we finished, Kings? Um Shah Shamar got his hand up, but no, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. Go ahead, Shah. Okay, yeah, we were just talking about you know how the uh king got taken away because his heart was tender to the most high. Um, so basically he was spared. And it reminded me of a scripture in um Isaiah 57, verse 1. I'm going to read it. Um, the righteous perish and no man laid to heart. And merciful men are taken away, not considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. So I thought, you know, that scripture fit perfectly with, you know, that those last uh, precepts that you brought out. All right. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we were playing charades. Um, you want a computer, Dom? So make it. My plug is going there. All right. Well, uh, let's go to say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Just want to say Shabbat Shalom and just give everybody that's online um, all uh, love from me and my family. Just want to say thank you all for being with us on this journey and for keeping the Shabbat with us on this day and for all the love and all the comments and everything y'all have sent to the family. And I just thank y'all for being with us and making the Shabbat a delight. So all praise, honesty be to the most high. If anybody else has anything online, any, any discussion, any comments before we get ready to close out, that's what we're going to include, conclude for tonight because we do have service in the morning as well. And, you know, we're going to do a little bit more fellowship in here. Um, but, you know, the floor is open. If anybody has any other comments before we get ready to close out with Tefala, and I just want to give everybody uh, my love and just say toda uh, to the Mishpaka. Does anybody have any words in regards to anything before we get ready to close out? I just want to say that it was a Tobe study and was very well edified. Oh, praise the Most High. I'll pray to the Most High. Tope, 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 study. Well, praise be to the most high. Zakane Yaquab, you got any words before we close up? Let's see. Elders, do y'all have any words before we close up? Let's see. Several elders on right now. You guys mic unmuted? I don't see it. I don't hear him. Because I can't even be speaking, we don't hear you. Which one has my community? No, it's my computer. So I can't, Yaquab, if you're trying to speak, you might have to log out and log back in. All right. All right, if that be the case, uh, so we can get ready to get prepared for tomorrow. And we're just going to do just a little bit of. Okay, he said he had to reboot earlier. Okay. Okay, Zakane, um, he just said, Toe Blessing, Maury Dawu. He said, Toe Blessing, uh, but he had to reboot earlier. So something's going on with, it, with his sound. So uh, we get ready to do the closing Tefla. I'm going to hand it over to. Uh, Sorry, Captain Honey. So you can do the closing Teflon.
Haleluya. 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 Bless Yahuwah, our Elohim, our King, our Almighty, El Elyon, El Shaddai, the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. We want to say Toda Yah for bringing in the Shabbat, Abba. Abba, as the Mori had put out the lesson today, Abba, as he prayed earlier today, Abba, we want to say Toda Yah just for your traveling mercy and all that travel, Abba, to support our brother, Abba. Abba is asking you for the healing of our Iman, Abba, and we had learned that our Iman had to rush to the hospital, the mercy room, Abba. Abba asked you to heal Iman Shoshana. Let that infection go away, Abba. Let the doctors get the right medication, Abba, to get the infection out, Abba, and heal her, Abba. Abba is asking you to lift up the spirits of all your ones that lost, lost ones, Abba. As you see, Abba, we have lost some of the men of the Most High, Abba, the elders of the Most High, Abba. As Maurice and Mark lost his Abba, Zakane Yadayahu lost his Abba, Zakane Lassimba lost his Abba, and Imam Melissa lost her Imam Abba. Abba, I'm just asking to lift them up, Abba. We know that they're not here in the physical form, Abba, but they're here spiritually, Abba. Abba, told out for this misbekah, Abba, told out for this family, Abba, told out that we are actually a misbekah that's coming together, Abba, to be there for each and every one of us, Abba. And that's because of you, Abba. You will show us how to be a misbekah, Abba. You showed us how to love one another, Abba. You show us how to build a community with each and every one of us, Abba. And you showed us how to bring that unity amongst us, Abba. It's your love, Abba. Your set apart commands, Abba, and for you to be patient with your children, Abba, because you know that we, like you said, we are stiff necked, rebellious children, Abba. But you love us, Abba. You continue watching over us, Abba. You continue protecting us, Abba, when sometimes we feel like we don't deserve it, Abba. So, told our Yah, told our Yah, we are thankful, Abba. We are thankful for you, Abba. We are thankful for the things you provide for us, Abba. We are thankful for the bread of life, Abba, that you breathe into us, Abba. Because when you breathe that bread of life into man, we became a living soul, Abba. So without that bread of life, Abba, we is nothing, Abba. So told our Yah for your bread of life, Abba. Abba, this has been a sad, emotional album, but it's been a joyful album. Yes. You know, album is that, that your children, I didn't put out early that we need to start coming together, album. Not this through time through morning, album. Not this on the Shabbat, album. Not this on the feast days, album. Or oh, even in the ones that's not in yet walk, Abba, even in, on the Sundays in church, Abba, they need, we need to start coming as a family, Abba. Yes, yes, yes. We only have one life to live, Abba, that you choose and when you put us on this earth, Abba. We don't know what's happened after we leave this earth, Abba. We don't know what kind of judgment and decisions you're going to do with our soul and our spirit when we leave this earth, Abba. So it's time for us to get it right while we own this earth, Abba. As you give us that time, Abba, we want, we want to get it right, Abba. Because, Abba, I'm just watching all of the death and destruction that's around us, Abba, each and every day, Abba. Abba, I'm watching that how time is just moving by us, Abba. It's like you close your eyes, Abba, and you've done to another month. That's how fast this time is gone, Abba. So I pray on the behalf of all your children on the four corners of earth, Abba, that we don't take this life that you provide us for granted, Abba. Yes, sir. That we take each and every day to try to get right with you, Abba. Because I know it's tough for your children out here, Abba. With all this wickedness that surrounds us, all this 
agenda out here, Abba, that's around us that they're trying to indoctrinate on your children, Abba. We, your children, fight that influence, Abba. Because Shaitan is making his way, Abba. He is making his way. <laughs> in front of right, so, the whole thing, I changed all of my the um, his will, I, on this earth before his time is up, Abba. Satan <laughs> is trying, Abba. He's trying to show that which children is with you and which one of your children is against you, Abba. Satan is doing his job, Abba, on this earth, Abba. It's for us, your children, rebuke Shatan Abba. Just like Ayo, your servants rebuked him, and your son Yahshua HaMashiach rebuked him. We have to live by that example, Abba, and rebuke Shatan Abba. Rebuke the adversary, rebuke this wickedness that's around us, Abba. Yeah. We are tested every day, Abba. It could be from you, Abba. Yeah. They're testing us, Abba. But we want you to test us, Abba. We want you to get us through these battles, Abba. Because at the end, we're looking for their victory, Abba. And that's one day to be in that kingdom next to you, Abba. That's the goal for all your children, Abba, to be in the kingdom next to you. And we have to put that work in, Abba. We put that work at, at a nine to five job, Abba. But we need to put that work for Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Abba, as we as calling the night, Abba, we asking for a restful sleep, Abba. We asking you to wake us, renew, refresh for another Shabbat lesson, Abba, for the Shabbat, Abba. And Abba, Continue putting your rule out in your spirit and more Shemak and more Dawu, Abba. Then continue putting that work in for you, Abba. Trying to lead your children back to you, Abba. And we are all on this line. We appreciate our two more is, Abba. This is a living example, Abba. There's no ego in the play, Abba. And you can see how much there is a car Abba. Abba, we just trying to get that righteous king in your on this earth, Abba. As we went through the book of King, Second Kings, Abba. We, we didn't have a righteous king since Josiah, Abba. So, Abba, we are trying to be, break that generation curse, Abba. Be righteous like our righteous forefathers was, Abba. The ones that was keeping your Torah. The one that was leading your children, Abba. The ones that were battle against wickedness, Abba. And the one that always feared Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba, on behalf of your children, we want all want to say that we love you. Love you. We serve you. Serve me. We honor you, Almighty Yah. And we esteem your set apart name. Yeah. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah Elohim. And bless who come in the name of Yahuwah Elohim. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Mishpachah, we 